guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, a Soviet man, Twitter the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Lakes Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> I like it, usually. That's really cool. You have to give me the address. I never really dived into the local music scene. It's hard to find, and it's hard to find an entry point. You just have to look for posters. We always hang a few around the city. And find the time to go there. But, I'll try going when you're playing at least, if I don't have practice then. Appreciate it. Are you talking about... Culture Genop... Culture Genop Livingshus? Culture Genop Livingshus? I, I know, I know, I know, I'm, I know I have mispronounced that. Horribly, probably. Yeah, that one. I took you there a few times, right? Just once. It was a cool place. Loved the atmosphere, but I didn't really like the bands. It's a toss-up with the local bands. Most of them are playing on, pro on a proper scene for a crowd for the first time, for the first or second time. I like live music. I like the energy, the atmosphere, the sound systems, the interaction with the band, the social aspect of it. Even if the bands aren't great, it's still an experience. I guess. I like concerts mostly for the music itself. You know what's you know you know what's social and interactive and fun? Karaoke. That's the most fun you could possibly have. I'm happy there are so many in Anslow. I never get bored of them. Do you think there might be one here? Unlikely, yes. But they always open in the late evening. There's no chance we'd find one this early. Yeah, right. And here are your teas. The timing is great. We're mostly done with the food already. This is Gyokuro. We're sharing all four. You can put them anywhere. Great choice. So this post is our ceiling. The blue one is Enjuan. And this one is Manlong Pu'er. Ah, huh, what's with that name? Rune chose this one on purpose, didn't he? Thank you. These are already brewed. When you want your second brews, please ring this bell. As any all, any all, and away he goes, leaving us with four teapots and four small vessels that I imagine are versions of teacups. Small and conical, plain and with no handle. Ah, huh, these are fancy. Uh, which one should we start with? I'd say let's start with the least oxidized, so Gyokuro first. Rune grabs the teapot, and one smooth motion later, three of our vessels are full. I grab my cup and lift it to my nose. The aroma is honestly plain weird. I don't even know what to compare it to. Huh, this doesn't smell like tea, more like broccoli? I take a sip, and the taste is definitely not what I expected. It's vegetably and strong, without any hint of bitterness, but very savory. The broccoli comparison seems apt. What is this? This is the strongest green tea I know. It's plenty funky. I think they make it by shading the plants. It's one of the most expensive kinds. Hmm. This is delicious. Glad you think so. It's a bit too weird for me. I can see myself getting used to it eventually, though. I don't think I'll finish mine. Anyone want some? I'll finish yours. I don't hate it. I'm kind of intrigued. Thank you. Not a fan of green tea? If they taste like this, definitely not. Most are easier to like. You might give some sentia a chance sometime. How about the next one, then? This one is an oolong, Zinjuan. It has a milky aroma and tastes a bit buttery. Buttery, huh? This should be interesting. I left my cup with a dose of uncertainty. I left it my nose and... The last night I spent in Lake's bed, cuddled up to him, comes to my mind instantly. Hmm, it is interesting, but I don't know if it's good. I like it! It's creamy! You don't feel it? Feel what? This smells like a person. The scent of clean skin, fresh out of the shower, underneath the fur. It's a pleasant scent, but it's really uncanny. Huh, it really does. Not at all. What are you talking about? Huh, y you're right. But I take a sip. Honestly, this is very nice. No vegetable notes, just butter and slight sweetness. The taste is rather delicate, but pleasing. But still, it's great. Much better than the green one. I like them both. I couldn't really choose. They breathe them really nicely here. They're not burnt or nor too weak. It's the worst when a cafe is high quality teas and just butchers them with awful brewing. Second, y'all. Okay. Okay, so now Darjeeling. Finish your cups and I'll pour you some. I finish the rest in one gulp. It rolls off my tongue nicely, leaving a rich, milky aftertaste. Is this like infused with milk or. Oh no, it's not infused with anything. This variety just tastes like that. This is definitely the weirdest tea I've ever tried. Now try this one. It's black tea. Very different from your usual from your usual package stuff. Hmm, let's see. The smell reminds me of leaves mostly, which makes sense. Tea is leaves, after all. But the taste is very light and pleasant. Very fresh despite this being a black tea. 
I was afraid to be too strong, but it's good. I wish all black tea tasted like this. For black tea, it's great. If all black teas tasted like this, I'd switch from coffee. You can find good ones for cheap. It doesn't have to be a Darjeeling to be good. I can always send you links to some good ones later if you want. Why not? I can check them out. I don't think my budget can afford a hobby, though. What's the other? Ah, right. Photography. Sorry. Yeah, the cost of film and Insta photos is killing me, honestly. I was thinking of just switching to all digital, but it doesn't scratch the same itch. I just like analog photography. I think I get it. Though, at least with the tea, you're spending money on something that's actually good for you and makes you feel nice, unlike with alcohol. But yeah, it can't be good for the wallet, but then what hobbies are? You can get into making music in a DAW, though I think it's way less fun than being done doing stuff live. Or watch films, or sing, you don't need any instruments other than yourself for that. I lean back in my seat, soft cushions like a cloud underneath me. Only now do I notice the music playing. Very quiet. Meditative. You know, this is really nice. Sitting here and drinking tea, I mean. I see the appeal now. Something about this has an otherworldly quality, as if the time was functioning differently here, detached from the world outside the window. There's one more tea to try. Already? We nod and Rune pours just a bit, enough for two sips, into each of our cups. The tea is very dark in color, darker than black tea even. I lift it to my nose again. It smells like earth or clay, something dug up from the ground. Huh, I don't think I like how it smells. Oh, that's a heavy smell. Makes me think of a cellar, but I drink pours before. I know what to expect. A small, cautious sip. Hmm. It's fine, just terribly heavy. Oh my. I think just, just this one cup will be enough for me. Uh, that's too heavy for me, definitely. Sorry. But I'll finish it. It's not terrible. So, which one to pour you next? <laughs> I feel dizzy. Huh? Everything alright? Yeah, just too much tea, I think. I knew tea had caffeine, but I didn't know how much, and apparently it's a lot. Ah, no, I don't feel too much. Maybe you're not used to drinking caffeine. But it was worth it. It was a nice experience being there. I really chilled out. It was good to have something like this after a few hours of lectures. Wind ruffles the fur on my head, cool and fresh, blowing from the sea. Looking around, everything seems more colorful and sharp now, beautiful in the evening sunlight. Yeah, I feel that too. That and caffeine kicking in. I hope I'll be able to sleep today. By the way, what are your plans? I'm asking because I want to visit a local art space, and we'd have to turn left here to reach it. I hope to watch the sunset from the coast, and it's not that close to the west of the island, so I better get start going there now. Lake, what about you? Oh, I'm not sure. I wanted to see more of the town. Maybe I'll just walk around a bit. Hmm, I'd like to hang out with him a bit more. I just have an idea what he might like. Can I join you? Oh, sure. It'd be much more fun together. So, so, see you back at the bus? Or maybe even earlier. I'll try to get to the coast too in an hour or so before sunset. Okay, sounds good. You can drop me a message if you don't see me when you get there. <clears throat> and waving us by, they both walk away. Rune to the east, Jorgen to the west. Meanwhile, I'm left here with Lake, my paw gripping my camera, aching to get some good shots here. So, anything in particular you wanted to see? The harbor, mostly. It's in this direction. We can basically follow Jorgen. We're not in a hurry, I hope. I might stop a lot to snap a picture or two along the way. Nope, go ahead. But if you're too slow, you'll have to try to keep up with me, because there's a lot of the town in little time. I nod and we start walking off into the snow-covered street, leading us back to the sea. It's nice observing Lake sightseeing. When he focuses on... What he focuses on, what interests him, it's all very different from how I see the world. I look for frames and subjects, but Lake looks for anything to pique his curiosity. I take a few pictures of him, too. I rarely take portraits, but with his enthusiasm and the spark in his eye, he's a better subject than our surroundings. I'm just glad to, I'm glad to just be with him again. I like the rest of our little group, too, but with Lake, I feel the most at ease. Being together comes naturally to us, and we never run out of things to talk about. Also... Oh, one second, y'all. Let me plug my phone in while I'm doing this. Yeah. Get that full battery for my day at work. There we go. Also, being alone with Lake, I can switch back to Finnish. No matter how much I speak English or Norwegian, they're not my mother languages. Even though I'm fluent in English, I still feel constrained by it. Hey, look at this! They have a museum of soda bottles in here! Soda bottles? That's a weird thing to collect. I bet that easily takes so much space that you need to dedicate a room to them. Looks like a cool exhibit, actually. Do you want to go in? No, we don't have that much time. I'd rather see more of the town. I nod and we walk past it, continuing towards the coast. Meanwhile, I keep looking around, searching for a place I found on the map. 
should be right around here. Hey, Lake, want to check out this place? This is a bakery. They have great reviews online. Their cakes are supposed to be particularly good. Oh, of course. I hope they have lemon cake or, or cupcakes or strawberry tart. I'm betting they do. They have all three and more. And Lake stands at the glass case, eyes hungry but undecided, presented with a tragic dilemma. These all look so good. He's not wrong. Scouting for something with good reviews paid off. The cakes look delicious, all beautifully decorated, and while the variety isn't great, every single one looks tempting. But I knew what I wanted since my since my sight rested on the luscious piece of velvet cake. Red velvet cake. I love red velvet cake. Decorated with whipped cream, chocolate chips, and a raspberry. The last piece left. My paw reaches out to it by itself, fingers closing around thin air before the glass pane. Hmm, do you want anything? Hmm, yeah, but I'm not sure what. There's deep longing in his voice, and his eyes glimmer wistfully, the whole assortment of cakes reflected in them. I thought I'd get the lemon tart, but the carrot cake's so good too. From behind the counter, the shopkeeper looks at us with a warm smile and eyes full of understanding that tells me that most of the customers have similar problems as we. Ooh, and that red velvet cake looks so great! No, not the red velvet cake! His words are a gut punch, but I force myself to smile through the pain. I'm doing this for him, not for me. Can I buy them for you? You won't have to choose which one you want. What? You don't have to. I can buy one myself. Yeah, but I want to. Remembering Lake's dream from yesterday, I think it'd be a nice gesture. Carvin, I won't eat that many anyway. We can have them packed and you can eat them whenever you feel like it. You wanted to see more of the town anyway, so we'll save this save the time this way. Fine. But I'm buying but I'm buying a few cupcakes for our friends then. I thought about buying some cardamom buns first, but these look so good. Each decorated with a mini figurine of a caribou, they indeed were a sight to behold. I turned to the shopkeeper, pointing through the glass pane. One lemon tart, one carrot cake, and one red ve and one velvet cake, please. All to go. Actually, I'd like the red velvet cake on a paper plate, please. Carvin, what about you? You don't want anything? Hey, hmm. I'm still thinking of the red velvet cake. Those look great, too, like the... Kladkaka, also melting on the platter, sprinkled with powdered sugar and raspberry adorning each piece. And a Kladkaka, please. Ah, in the cozy bakery, I forgot about the damp cold already. Now it bites at my nose, slowly penetrating through the fur on my snout, too. Mm, let's get moving. I don't want to freeze here. Coming! Lake checks the bag again, making sure that the cupcakes won't fall over. With their cream decorations and delicate figurines, it would be an insurmountable waste. Okay, they're all good. The cakes are safe in my backpack, apart from the last from the one I lust after. The only piece of red velvet cake on a paper plate in Lake's paw. So, where now? To the harbor, and then we can walk along the coast. I'm curious what's there. You don't you don't want to eat your cake now? Second y'all. I can wait until we're back. That dinner at the tea house was more filling than I thought it would be. Hmm, you say? But I see the way you look at my cake. Ah, caught red handed. Or rather hungry eyed? Did you want that one? I remained silent. Do you want some? Yes. You should have said so. I don't mind sharing. We can have it together. I have another spoon in the bag. You can have it. Thank you, Lake. Full of gratefulness, all fuzzy inside, I take the spoon from Lake and take a piece of the cake. It's sweet, just like this boy I'm sharing it with. So we walk down the narrow streets leading us to the coast, enjoying the cake in each other's company. Mmm, it was good. I, I could go for another, though. Wait, you have something here. His outstretched paw touches my snout, just below my mouth. The paw pad of his thumb rubbing against it, wiping some crumbs from my fur. Our eyes our eyes meet and the corners of his mouth curve upward in a gentle smile, like the low hanging sun behind him, shining through his silvery mane. His feline nose trembles so funnily when he smiles. It's cute. Thanks. Have you ever, um, held paws with someone? The blood rushes to my ears, my heart's slow pace turning into a gallop. I, uh, I don't think so. D do you want to? Yes. Nice and his paw finds mine. It's soft and fuzzy and a bit damp with sweat, but, and so is mine. I haven't felt this nervous since the high school finals. As if ashamed of this, Lake moves his palm away, only the, so that only our fingers touch, paw pads pressed against paw pads, then our fingers entwine, paws link together. A bolt of energy runs through my spine, sparks exploding just at the base of my head. Lake. Blushing, he turns away and continues through the street, pulling me after himself. We walk along the coast now, but lightheaded, I only see Lake and me, and the snow falling around us in spirals as if the world inverted somehow, inside turned outside. My paw seems to lift off the ground and I glide next to the lion. My paw, okay. Weightless, his paw not holding me down to the earth but pulling me upwards. I stay silent, 
We don't need any words to share this closeness. Suddenly we find ourselves outside the town, leaving the tiny wooden houses behind us. The landscape changes and we step into sparse woods, the sea rolling over a patch of sand to our left. There's not as many people here. There's not as many people there, but I don't mind them at all anyway, barely noticing them. The green envelops us, mixed with white and azure, and suddenly it's all quiet except for our steps against the backdrop of the gentle sea. We've left the world behind. You know, if not for the mountains behind the sea, it would it would feel just like home, like at home. In Finland, you mean? Yeah. You don't think of it as your home? Not anymore, no. I don't think so. My home is where I am. Oh, look! Isn't that Rune and Jorgen? Indeed, they walk along the coast in our direction towards the town, chatting. I'll go give them the cupcakes! Hey, Jorgen! Our paws disconnect, and away he goes, running up to the bat and the buck. Did he not want to see? Did he not want them to see us holding hot paws? Or am I overthinking this? No, I don't. I don't think he'd care. He's not the type of person that would. I land on the ground softly, the world around me coming back into focus. A sudden absence of Lake's fingers between my the heat of his paws feels like a void, a negative space that opened up suddenly. I'm going to shake my paw and follow Lake. Ah, faint. As Lake reaches the pair, something flies off the side and drops into the sea with a splash. Nope, we're gonna finish this. Whatever that was, Rune didn't sound too happy. Huh? What happened? Don't. Better give me a minute. Better give him a minute. Rune runs off into the sea, fishing the lost object from the water. Wiping it at his trousers, all soaked with seawater now, he returns to us solemnly. I wanted to give Rune his cupcake and knocked his phone from his paw. D does it work? No. Rune tries to smile, but fails miserably, his expression shifting between anger and deep sadness. Rune, I'm so sorry! It happens. Don't worry. He doesn't look at us, though. His voice is completely flat, just as his tail, glued to his leg. Uh... Maybe you could put it in rice, and it could absorb the moisture? Do you have rice, maybe? No. It wasn't waterproof? I thought most phones are now. Nope, I got something budget-friendly. I don't need an expensive phone, and if it'd break, I wouldn't regret it as much. So I guess that came in handy now, at least. I just wanted to give you a cardamom bum. I, I bought a bunch at the bakery. Thanks. Maybe it's still repairable. Maybe. I'd like to try, at least. I can't even take out the battery. Now they're just built in and, what, and not replaceable. How quickly the mood has changed. We walk back to the town in silence, Lake walking a few steps behind us with a solemn look on his face. Rune looking somewhere in the distance, his face emotionless like a mask. I want to give Lake a hug and cheer him up, but with Jorgen and Rune around, I find myself unable to do that. I'll wait for it until we're back on the bus. I feel sorry for him and Rune both, but it's Lake who I feel the need to comfort now. He looks even more miserable than the buck. Strap your seatbelts, please. We're leaving in a moment. The bus doors close with a hiss followed by the engine's low rumble, like a beast walk waking to life. Everyone's in and without any delays the vehicle starts, so we're out the town and back in the woods. Lake slouches in his seat solemnly, his face contorted in guilt and, and guilt unspeakable. I can't help but feel sorry for the poor lion. I should have paid him for the phone. Yeah, that would be for the best. But I can't. I don't have any I don't have money for that. Ah, well, that makes it harder. The rune didn't say you have to, thankfully. Such is the life of a student. Maybe, but I still feel bad. I what phone Rune had. If it was some cheap model, maybe we could afford to get a new one together. I'll talk with him later, maybe see what I can do. I'll think about it for now. There's not much you can do. Better think of how we're going to spend the rest of the day. We're free after we arrive. Remember about the film playing in the evening? I'd like to go see it. We could go, sure. At least, uh, see what they'll, what they'll be playing. Lake leans his head on my shoulder, his paw finding mine once again. It takes me by surprise and I freeze, my body not knowing how to react. But then I lean into his warmth, holding his paw in mine. The void is filled and the warm glow returns. Everything feels right. The landscape scrolling behind the window hypnotically, I slowly forget about everything else. About the lectures, about the phone, about Torolf and Rune, about everything around us. Only the swirling snowflakes and the lion leaning on me remain in my consciousness as my, mind, as my mind fogs. Heart full, eyes open and half sleep, dreaming about the world where everyone is alright. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.